challenge for you, Sark. A new recruit. It's a tough case, but I want him treated in the usual manner. Train him for the games, let him hope for a while, and blow him away. It's not any kind of program, Sark. He's a user. That's right. He pushed me in the real world. Somebody pushes me, I push back, so I brought him down here. What's the matter, Sark? You look nervous. No one user wrote me. I'm worth millions of their man years. You'd rather take your chances with me? Want me to slow down your power cycles for you? Wait! I need that! Then pull yourself together. Get this clown trained. I want him in the games until he dies and play. Acknowledge. End of line. Don't be afraid, Carlos. I know a great deal. Carla. And I will give you the things you dream about. Welcome to the Dream Machine. Call me Dream Maker. And all I want is to give you everything you want. I believe you wished for cake. You don't need money. The Dream Machine will take the resources and needs and turn them into whatever you want. Watch. That's right. Let them all eat cake. Yes, I suppose I do owe you that much, Detective, since in many ways you are responsible for it. You see, I had hoped to achieve my vision of an earthly utopia gradually over time, with my heir carrying on my work after I was gone. But your refusal to become my heir has left me no other choice. No, leave it. It is a mark of honor. Even though because of him I must now use what I call the Lazarus Effect to achieve my utopia in one bold stroke. The material of the pit is an unknown chemical stew that bubbles to the Earth's surface only at certain key places. Even now my people are placing bombs, such as that one, over the various Lazarus pits around the world. These bombs are electronically linked to a private satellite already in Earth orbit. Precisely. And at the moment when Sun and Moon are in proper alignment to cause the greatest upheaval in Earth's geomagnetic field, I shall send a signal to that satellite beginning a countdown. Old age, Superman. It truly is a shipwreck. One that I have survived more times than I can remember. For centuries, I've kept myself alive by immersing my body in Lazarus pits. Their wondrous powers rejuvenated me. But each time, the effects were more and more short-lived. Now they can no longer sustain me. Your strength. You always were the perfect specimen, Detective. Even old age has not softened you as much as I had feared. I don't cheat death, I master it. Though I assure you, this time my longevity comes at a price, most dear. I did indeed survive our last battle, but my body was broken far beyond the pit's powers to heal. In order to save my life, I called upon Talia to undertake the ultimate act of loyalty. I did what I had to do. At the time, this computer could only imprint my thoughts and memories on a close genetic match. But now, this youthful form has served its purpose. I must move on to a new host body. Yours. Silence! I'm alive! Uh -huh. I'm alive and yeah. I'm a dinosaur! Yes. Good. How wondrous! How magical! Now, if you could just tell me who I am. I'm sorry, I don't recognize any of you. Oh, how do you do? And who might you be? My family? First I am freed from my earthly bondage, and now I have a family of my own. My heart overflows with joy. Fran. Oh, what a beautiful sound. Uh -huh. Like a robin warbling its first song of the new morning. Oh, the ripening fruit of my seed. I am thrice blessed. No. There is no other spot for miles around where the riverbank is stable enough to support the bridge. I designed this trestle myself. It will stand serving others after I am long gone. That woman, Vesta. 
She's got a loose bolt in her armor. She screams bloody murder every time someone trims a hedge. I'm fond of Adam's Oak myself, but as a merchant, I must think of the future of my community. And our future depends on this road to the sea. With it, we can grow and prosper. Prince Valiant! Please remember that the people of Harmony will have free access to this road. For the first time, the farmers will have an easier route to the markets at the harbor. It will benefit everyone. We are soldiers of Crittenden, trained as fighting men. But my friends, what purpose have we anymore? I ask you, what good is a fighting man in a place now ruled by the gutless ideals of Arthur's Camelot? The man is weak. And our leaders are weak for having pitched in with his cowardly notions of peace and non-violence. Perfect. This is just what we needed. What use is a mole who can't burrow without being seen? Watch yourself, Gareth, or you'll be soon swinging on the gallows. My fellow patriots, I have most welcome news. Here in my hand is the very instrument of Arthur's undoing. We will deliver this to Mordred, our glorious and future king. It's a plot, I tell you. Arthur wants his people to think that Northland is responsible for Merlin's disappearance. Arthur knows how ill your father is, Michael. His talk of peace is a trick. That Prince Michael, hold. One of Arthur's spies, no doubt. Bosley, my son, check the Aurora. Tell Arthur he shall not have them spy. Tell him that Northland will never be his. Really? Even your own people say it was you who betrayed Merlin to his abductors? Hidden in her own bed. What more proof do you need? I would not do that, your highness. Pretend. You will sign Queen Alita's death warrant, your majesty. Any action against the new dawn by either yourselves or your army will mean instant death for Queen Alita. So, your majesty. Do you surrender? It will soon be over, Your Highness. Now you must return to your tent. You are not a warrior, Your Highness. Do not make us kill you. Help her, and Queen Alita dies! Gatekeeper! I have scavenged one million fleshless souls of man and beast. Grant my passage to Earth where I may hunt my fill. So long has it been since I have tasted pulp and blood. Open thy gate! I have waited endless millennia for this mighty one, and still he does not come. Wretched gatekeeper, I shall not be confined. Shiver in my presence, the icebreaker has come up. Mission complete, Limburger. Martian mice, you say? Ice with frost at the mouth, just to give those freedom fighters a chilly reception. <laughs> Hear this, warm bloods. I am Icebreaker, the chill that runs down your spine. Prepare for freezer burn. Ha <laughs> ha, cornered rats. Your frosty futures are cold and bleak. <laughs> <laughs> I see cold sweat on your brows, tepid ones. After him, you fools! Don't let him escape! It's me, Landon. Don't do that, please. I have no choice. I can't let him have my technology. All right. Here's the money. I'm sorry, but you gave me no choice. Hello? Landon? Yes? Kingpin, are you spying on me? The work's going fine. Come to my press conference and hear for yourself. Or send one of your informants. I'd like to delay it, but my chief investor needs reassurance. To get him off my back, I'll share some of my preliminary findings with the press, for now. But my real work, for the good of mankind, won't be finished until I perform one final test. My name is Arthur Dearborn. Can I get you anything? A cronies? I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm quite alone up here. Except for son Turian. We've met. Uh, yes, I apologize for the unfortunate welcome he gave you. He's very protective. You see, the Starwell is my life's work. The sum total of all my dreams. Please, let me show you. I realized long ago that if a third world war is ever waged, it shall be for control of our scarcest resource, energy. Fossil fuels are a thing of the past. 
nuclear power too controversial. But this, the star well, is unique. By gathering solar energy and beaming it to receiving stations on Earth, I can provide pure, unlimited power to any corner of the globe. Tight beams of microwaves. Controlled heat. All of the pieces are now in place. Goliath and his clan are doomed. Isn't it time for you to go? I was just about to. Are you certain you know what to do? I should. I watched you do it. There is so much to teach him. Fortunately, I have nothing but time. Feel better now. Are you me? I'm who you will become. Then you must help me recover the Grimorum from that beast, Goliath. All in good time. The book is now part of history and must fulfill its role in the time stream. Then why have you brought me here? I could put you back where I found you. No, no. All right, then think. What do you want? Ultimate power and revenge. Then you will need many things. Allies, soldiers, weapons, and a base of operation. Be silent and watch. Dragon eggs be blessed. What is it? The better question is, who is this traveling stranger that you should be carrying the most important book in all of Sarmoti? The written record of all that transpired in the Year of the Darkness, as recorded by the last seer of Galen. A titan crossing over from the realm of Endland. Before her wizardry was stripped from her, the seer wrote of all she beheld in her mind's eye. She listed all the lands of Sarmoti where they tricked magic from the elves, seduced spells from fairy princesses, and drained enchantments from sights all over our world. Not precisely. I am on no one's side. Destroy? Again, not precisely. Forgive me, Lord Nebula, I forgot the have no material bodies. Time and space mean nothing to them. I was swept away like so much rubbish. Oh. Fortunately, I was picked up by a Caserbian techno salvage ship. They reassembled me and added a few product upgrades. I took over the ship and swore myself to the one cause worth living and dying for. Revenge! And now, Nebula, I have you just where I want you. You are merely a mindless slave. My fellow supervillains, I am touched by the standing room only turnout for this important event, the culmination of my criminal career, the lobotomy of Freakazoid, performed with pride by yours truly, the Lobe. Is the patient ready for the anesthetic? Now to open the skull of Freakazoid and see what makes him tick. Bonjour, Titans. It is I, the Lobe. I already said that. I know, it's just I want to make sure the name sinks in. It's been a while. The Lobe! Using our combined intellects, we shall devise the most brilliant evil plan the world has ever seen. <laughs> we Freakazoid! It's so good to see you. How's the family? Good. My son just graduated from evil medical school. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, you have arrived just in time for the unveiling of our ingenious plan. Behold, the trans-mongrel fire. We'll show you how brilliant our plan is by testing it on your friend. I couldn't help it. It's just so much fun to say. Hug me. I don't remember inviting anyone to my room, and yet I have a visitor. Why? What could you possibly offer me? And who might my enemies be? Tell me what you know. Give me the information, or die a slow, lingering death. Ah, so you are the vault dweller I've been hearing about. 
Surprised? I have my sources. Now I will take you as a gift to the master. He'll be very pleased. Eagle? What were you doing, Eagle? Just what, Eagle? I'm going to get cleaned up now, and when I come back, I want this laboratory spotless. Good. When I return, we can decide which way the two of you would like to be executed. What on earth is this awful racket? Now look, I heard some kind of commo- oh. Igor? What are you hiding? Igor, did you make something in the lab? What an adorable baby! Oh, oh no! Doc! Don't! Coochie, coochie, coo. ah, Get it off! Get it off me! This could be the room of any small boy, but it happens to belong to Christopher Robin. Like most small boys, Christopher Robin has many stuffed animal friends. And together, they had many remarkable adventures in an enchanted place called the Hundred Acre Wood. Now his best friend is a certain little bear. And one of the grandest of their many grand adventures began around and about this day. A most delightful time of candies and cards. A day of Valentine's. <laughs> but happy as it was, the day brought with it a certain uncertainty. For this was also a time of change. And change does not come easily for some bears. Especially a bear named Winnie the Pooh. Hello, Kay. Twenty years. How sad these days. Oh, that's right, you wouldn't know. I've done some personal remodeling since we parted company. These days... I'm fully loaded. Deep space. I've spent 20 years traveling the cosmos, hand-picking alien anatomies, surgically enhancing myself, becoming more powerful than any one alien. Or human. This little piece of work's gonna make me a mortal. And I'll expect a full report on his performance, Captain Toulon. Bren, I'll meet up with you in person at your next destination, Kalam. We'll discuss your insubordination. One other thing. Your brother was killed on his way to rule. His entire unit was eliminated by a rebel sneak attack. At least one member of your family understood his duty. You've disgraced his honor with your actions. Now, my good grounders, I'll be gone soon and then you can blow holes in each other all you want. Could we keep this conversation at the King's Tangier, if you don't mind? <clears throat> oh, there's that awful odor again. What do you call it? The hall is booked, the caterer hired, and the blasters are in my shuttle. The attack is on. You do that. When your grounder powers negate the Tangian powers, the blasters will give us the edge we need. And then you and I can begin our power-sharing arrangement. <laughs> yeah, I share the sentiment, but I'll pass on the vulgarity. <laughs> Welcome to the center of the world. My name is Nurgle. And you two little guys must be billion men. Right back at you, tough guy. Well, you see, Grim, I've been watching you and your little pals for some time now, having fun, playing games with each other and laughing together. So much friendly fun. But you know, living here alone in the center of the earth can get very lonely. That's why, Grim, I've decided I'm keeping the kids as my friends. Forever! <laughs> Thousand, signorina. They are treasures excavated from archaeological digs. A seed left by the creative souls of those who came before us. It's only dirt, I'm afraid. Italian law does not permit construction over archaeological sites. However, they are never found under the places where the Scungimondo Corporation builds. Scungimondo is the largest construction company in Italy. I am the ghost of Hank Banning. I have returned to seek my revenge. Prepare to meet your doom! I warn you, Colonel. Fail me, 
and your world will pay the price. Viperox are not accustomed to taking orders from lesser species, Colonel, or to their mistakes. See to it that you do not let us down. Perhaps this doctor is more than he appears. Be careful, human. I am Aslock, Lord Knight of the Imperial Viperox Warhorde. Consider who seems in more danger of being crushed underfoot. What do you think the Empire of the Viperox would possibly want with this termite ball? Who is this man you call the Doctor? Ah, oh, Doctor. You are not of this world. I hear two hearts beating. We seek only an enemy of our kind. Do you even know whom you face? You know nothing of me! You know nothing of what I must do! You will suffer! You will all suffer! So, Godchild, you have escaped. You are more resourceful than I had thought. Torture? Silly girl, you just don't understand what I'm doing, do you? I won't let you leave, not when I'm so close to unlocking your power. Enough! I will no longer listen to the babbling of ignorant children. Must I be interrupted at every turn? Enough of this! I will destroy you and everyone you love! <laughs> I am Dr. Wrecker. Kneel before Dr. Wrecker. Dr. Wrecker is... Ow! This is ridiculous. Why do I have to get dressed like this? <laughs> How did that sound? Guys? Guys! Hello? You think this is a game? You think that because you helped me find myself, I'm no longer your enemy? You think we're friends? I'm Dr. Wrecker, and before long... You will be rectified. You turned me into the villain Gumball Watterson. You left me with this broken body. You gave me this ridiculous voice. Well, now, I am in control.